So let's talk for just a few minutes about what's holding you back. What's holding you back? What's holding you back from the great future and the great plans that God has for you? I'm sure every one of us have thought that every once in a while. Like, what? What's going on? Like, what's what's kind of clogging up the gears? What's stopping me? Listen to this word right here from God's word. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. This is coming right from the mouth of God. Listen to this. Do not remember the former things. Everybody say that. Don't worry. Remember what? Do not remember the former things, God says, or ponder the things of the past. Have you, have you ever felt like sometimes you just you're sitting there, you're staring off in the distance, thinking about yesterday, thinking about what's happened in the past? Has that ever been you pondering the past? Verse 19, God says, listen carefully. How are you supposed to listen? Listen carefully. God says, I'm about to do a new thing. Who's going to do the new thing? Now, God says, it's going to spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? When he asks the question, will you not be aware of it? There's a significance to that. Because the thing is, if you can't hear it, you can't have it. That's the rule of God's word. If you can't perceive it, you can't receive it. That's the way God always operates. In a room full of a thousand people, you can present the gospel. Everybody can hear it audibly. You can speak the words, but only those who perceive it at the end when you say, who would like to receive Jesus into their heart? You can have a thousand people that all need Jesus, but only those who heard it, who perceived it, are going to be able to receive it. So out of a thousand people, you might have a hundred people put up their hands and say, I'll receive that. And you can say, well, what happened? Didn't all one thousand hear it? They may have heard it audibly, but they didn't hear it on the inside of them. They didn't hear it, perceive it to receive it. And here's what God says in this word. He says, don't remember the former things, Stephen, or ponder the things of the past. Don't sit there and daydream in a coffee shop about, oh, man, the good old days. Oh, I remember when this and, you know, when I was a quarterback in high school and you know, it's like he says, don't do that. Verse 19, God says, listen carefully. Don't just listen, but listen carefully. God says, I'm about to do a new thing. Not you do the new thing. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Then God says, will you not be aware of it? He's saying, are you not going to perceive it? Because. Here's the golden rule. If you don't perceive it, you don't receive it. God says, I will even put a road in the wilderness. That means he's going to make a way where there's no way. Then he says this rivers in the desert. That means provision where there seems to be no provision. Right, Jacob? He's going to make a way where there's no way. Some of you guys have had answers to prayer where God has literally made a way where there was no way. So this is what God does. One of the greatest obstacles to your future, listen to this, and this is something that I learned a long time ago that's so important. It's not your lack of ability. It's not your lack of talent. It's not your lack of strength. Your future is not being blacked, blocked out by your lack of opportunity. Sometimes you're thinking, if only I had more opportunity, then I could access my future. Your future is not being blocked by a lack of opportunity or open doors or even your moral goodness, your moral righteousness, your future is not being held back because you're just not quite righteous enough, right? Second Corinthians 5.21 says that we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So you got righteousness at a maximum level in Christ Jesus. Isn't that so? It may not feel like it. You know, it may not feel like that after you have an argument that you got the righteousness of Christ, but by faith you do. One of the greatest obstacles to a person's future is our love for what's familiar, our love of the past, the way it was. God always has a future for us, and the hardest thing in life is to let go of yesterday and go forward. Paul the Apostle said this in Philippians 3, verse 13 and 14. He says, here's the one thing I do. Here's what I actually work at. This is what I put my effort to, forgetting the things that are past and reaching forth unto the things that are before Verse 14, he says, I press on toward the goal. I remember one time in Nashville, Tennessee, just sitting in my quiet time with the Lord and just saying, God, all your promises are amazing. You got so much good stuff. Why is it so many of us believers struggle to grab the good stuff and go forward? And it was like without even. Without a second's hesitation, I could hear the Holy Spirit saying, because you just love the past. You just love the way it was. 
because you just so quickly become used to what's familiar. And think about it. Our flesh, our instinct, we do. You know, like, I mean, once you learn how to smoke a cigarette, like once you get over the initial part where your body rejects it, suddenly your body becomes addicted to the very thing that before you would cough and spit and have such a hard time taking it. Suddenly your body becomes used to the way it was yesterday. And the next thing you know, you're addicted to the very thing that before you were rejecting. We, our carnal selves, love the way it was. Even, you know, like they'll talk about, you know, when they analyze people who are abused, people become used to being abused. And then guess what they do? They're attracted to abusers. They become used to it and become familiar with it. And so it's almost like somebody who talks good to them and who speaks life to them. That's just so painful. That's new. That's I'm not used to that. And somebody who speaks life and somebody who encourages them, it's they're so filled with mistrust and they're so it's such a new thing. It's so painful. They resort to go back to the abuser because that's what they're used to. That's what they're familiar with. And this is what God's saying to you and me today. He's saying, Stephen, don't remember the former things. He says, don't ponder the things of the past, not the good things and not the bad things. And I said to Pam a lot of times, you know, when we look back at the past victories, we give God the glory for opening up the Red Sea, right? We give God the glory for making provision in the wilderness where there was no provision, but we don't stay there. We don't set up an altar and just say we're going to live there. We, we give God the glory for the good things of the past, and we move forward. We say God's doing a new things, and that's the thing about your future. The pressure's on God, not on you. The pressure's on me and you just to let go, just keep being an expert like Paul saying, here's the one thing I do. Here's what I'm an expert at, letting go and moving on. Letting go and moving on. Here's what I'm good at. Here's what I put my effort into by faith. I forget the things of the past and I move forward. God's doing a new thing. Aren't you excited about that? God's already set up. He's already provided. He's already looking for you. He's already done a new thing for you. So you can let go of that old boyfriend and you can move on because God's doing a new thing. I believe the Holy Spirit's speaking to somebody. You can let go of that old situation. You can let go of that old habit. You can let go of that old familiar thing, and you can move on. God's got a future for you, and he says, I'm the one that's going to take the pressure on me to do a new thing for you. God says, I'm the one that's going to provide a way for you where there seems to be no way. And he says, I'm going to provide for you in a wilderness where it seems there could never be any water. I'm going to bring up springs and rivers and fountains where it looks like it's a dry desert. This is what God's got for you. But what's the thing that hinders us? Our love of the familiar, our 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 fear of letting go of the past. Right. And I mean, we've all been there, man. Listen, if. if I like consistency, so that's how I try to make it sound really kind of Christian. I like consistency. You know, I'm, I'm a consistent person. I like things consistent. And so sometimes I sit down with the Holy Spirit and I have a conversation about my appreciation for consistency. And he tries to tell me, Stephen, me and you know what we're talking about. You're just holding on to the past. Let go, right? It requires faith to let go and trust God. So I'm just right now, close your eyes. I just want you to envision yourself. You get your hand holding the post of yesterday. And you're doing your best. I know you want the future. But you've been standing in this spot long enough. You know, you're reaching out with your other hand. But you still got that post. You're still holding on to that post. And I want you to imagine yourself. You're trusting God. You turn your head toward the future. And you let go. You're letting go of that post and you're reaching forth and God's got something for you. He's got he's already done the new thing. But the cost is you letting go of yesterday so that you can have the beautiful future. What's he saying, Jeremiah 29, 11? I know my thoughts for you. I know the thoughts I got for you. The thoughts to prosper you, to reward you, to bless you. He's going to reward your faith. So, Father, for everyone in this room, every family represented in this room, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we, we use the weapons of our warfare to pull down every stronghold, every fear of tomorrow, every fear of letting go of the past. And, Father, right now, we, 
We acknowledge that, Lord God, you are flooding our hearts with confidence, trust, and faith in you, that you've got good things for us. You've got a future for us. Father God, yesterday was good, but you move us from glory to glory to glory, and you've got greater glories tomorrow, Father. God, you've got greater things, greater signs and wonders, Father, that you're walking us into, and God, you're always making the path shine brighter and brighter and brighter because you are the light. 